Okay, guys, so this is a continuation of our lecture uh, uh, last time on how we distribute the forces vertically. So now, our uh, task is to determine the procedure on how to distribute the forces horizontally or, or, or laterally. Okay. So to begin with, uh, I'd like to sh show you a, a derivation of how the uh, forces are actually acting no, on, on, a, on a certain frame. Let's say if I have here a okay, frame where in uh, there's a, uh, a base shear there and then a moment here it can be accidental or uh, due to the eccentricity e, e. so we we can say now that uh, this force will be distributed on the uh, frame not only in the vertical direction but also in the uh, lateral direction so what, what what's uh, uh, what does that mean? No? So the meaning is if I have here a force, let's say a V here, uh, this force here will actually be resisted by the, the frame columns, which is a part of the uh, lateral uh, resisting elements of the uh, building itself. Uh, so frame by frame, uh, if I have here a, a, a V force here, I can say that uh, this frame here, let's say this is a, a frame one, will actually receive a different set of uh, shear with that of frame two here. Okay, so it depends upon the distance of your center of rigidity. Uh, to the column that makes the distribution differently from one frame to the other okay so the 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 uh, farther okay the farther the distance to the frame the direct force okay so we have here a direct force will be smaller and smaller okay while in the torsional uh, aspect the farthest of the frame the farthest the frame from the center of rigidity so it becomes what bigger and bigger so it's actually the other way around but uh, for simplicity of discussion sometimes when we talk of this uh, direct forces we simply uh, distribute this uniformly by simply dividing the number of uh, uh, by dividing by the base shear by the number of frames, okay, perpendicular to the direction of the the uh, base shear force. While in the torsional forces, the distribution will be a function of the distance from the center of rigidity. Okay, so that is the uh, that's more or less the the uh, logic or the rational behind the computation of the total frame forces so let us define now what is rigidity so what rigidity is simply the magnitude upon which a force is needed for a column to be displaced one unit horizontally okay and it's given by this formula here so the, the definition is so technical but if we are uh, going to look at this uh, formula, this is simply a stiffness formula. Uh, you, are, you were using uh, on, on the slope deflection method or maybe in the, in the moment distribution method. No? So it's a simply a 12 EI over L cube formula. So in earthquake engineering, this is termed as rigidity and take note that actually the value of absolute rigidity is not necessary so just like moment distribution uh, procedure we are not uh, interested with the 
uh, absolute value, R, but rather we are more related with the relative rigidity. Why? Because we are trying to distribute it on the basis of the stiffness and the basis of the distance from the center of rigidity. Okay? So it is the relative rigidity that matters actually since all the columns are of equal material E and of equal section I and equal length L, we assign a relative rigidity say equal to 1. No? So parang uh, uh, moment distribution lang na ina-assign natin ng, ng uh, unit, unit value yung mga stiffnesses natin. No? So for the transverse frame, of the problem, I'm referring now to this problem uh, here. Okay. For the transverse frame of the problem, uh, these are the transverse frames. And these are the uh, longitudinal frames. Okay. So we have seven transverse frames and three longitudinal frames. So all in all, we can just count the number of columns in the transverse frame and the number of columns in each of the longitudinal frame to add up to your uh, total relative rigidity. So this is now equivalent to, uh, for the transverse frames, we have three columns or three and for the longitudinal frames, we have seven columns or seven. Okay, so take note again that R is a relative value. So in case the, the uh, moment of inertia are not the same, we have to make use of a relative uh, value of the moment of inertia for each and every column along, along the uh, uh, two directions, okay? So, we have to pick a basis. Pipili tayo ng isang reference basis na column, tapos kukuha lang tayo ng proportion in order for us to get the relative values. So, the direct force now is simply equal to, uh, to this uh, formula, okay, R all over summation of R. Because for every... 1 kN of lateral force on the building in the transverse direction, each frame 1 to 7 will receive 3 over 21. Okay? So, this is now the direct force distribution. So, for each frame, meron tayong, for each transverse frame, meron tayong tatlo, and the total uh, Number of columns for the whole frame is 21, or simply this is 1 over 7. Okay? So, 3 over 21 is simply 1 over 7 or 0.143 kilonewton. And so, similarly with the longitudinal frame, it will be 7 over 21, which is uh, simply 1 third. Okay? So, this is 1 over 7, this is 1 third. So, that's how you get the direct force based on a uniform distribution. Again, why is it uniform here? Because the, the uh, uh, material uh, elasticities are equal, the sections are equal, and the lengths are equal. So for the torsional force, it's a little bit involved because we need to, to uh, get a formula and the building is symmetrical in terms of the rigidity and the mass, therefore, uh, uh, will not induce any torsion at all. So, there is no cal calculated torsion because the building is uh, purely symmetrical in terms of shape, uh, column sizes, etc. No? But since there is a 5% accidental eccentricity, which is a minimum uh, provision on the code of NSCP, we have to Take note that your torsional movement will be computed on the basis of 1 times the accidental eccentricity. Okay? So, for the uh, transverse direction, uh, your H will be 36. And for your longitudinal direction, your H will be 
15. Okay, so where did the where did that came from? So it just came from the figure here. If the earthquake is moving up and down like this here, then the frame now, the horizontal dimension of the frame is 36. So in the transverse direction, you will use h equals uh, 36 on the transverse direction. But for the uh, longitudinal uh, direction of earthquake, ang frame na gagamitin mo dito will be, ang h na gagamitin mo will be h equals your longitudinal. Okay. Consideration. Okay? So that's why if you will look here on the computation, your h for the transverse is 36 and your h for longitudinal is 50. So I get now a, un uh, a relative unit uh, unit uh, moment relative to 1 kN of a force, which is 1.8, and a relative uh, a torsional moment on the longitudinal direction based on a 1 kN of a force. So how do, how do I get now the uh, percentage or the... Uh, uh, the uh, factor, no? the distribution factor for the torsional force uh, per frame, which is uh, Tf. So we now use this formula. So this formula is just uh, a formula derived on your mechanics of materials. Okay, so Mt over D is simply what? This is simply the moment, the torque divided by the, the distance. Distance from the... the uh, uh, center of uh, rigidity, okay, and then Rd squared over summation Rd squared is just a dimensionless factor, okay, so this is just a dimensionless uh, factor. Okay, so we can do this uh, more easily by using a table, but I use a program here to do it. Okay, so what I do, what I did is uh, I just uh, come up with a program that will iterate from uh, 1 to 7, okay, for the transverse direction, and 1 to 3 for the longitudinal direction. But if you are a little bit confused about this, you can actually make use of an Excel worksheet. So I... I I ought to explain to you this on the Excel worksheet. Uh, mas madaling maintindihan. Okay. So what I would just do is to type the frame 1 to 7 and A to A, B, C there. Of course, these are for the transverse frame and these are for the longitudinal frame. Okay. So we have R, the rigidity is 3 columns each. And R, the rigidity, is 7 columns each. Of course, the total, total columns here will still be 21. And the total columns here will still be 21. That's why you have obtained a uniform distribution like this. Okay, so this part here, class, is simply for the direct force. Now, for the torsional factor, uh, you have to tabulate. So this is for the torsional factor. You have to tabulate D, D squared, R D squared, and just make use of the formula a while ago. Okay? So what I did is I just uh, took the uh, the ratio uh, given by this formula here. Okay, for Tf, Mt over D. Of course, Mt uh, was based on the computation here, 1.8 and 0.75. So, you, have, you just have to plug it in there. Okay, I was not able to, to uh, place it on the table, but uh, you have to consider it. So, my Tf will simply be equal to, again, Mt over D multiplied by the factor rd squared over summation 
rd squared. So I just uh, make use of the rd squared here, and then I took a summation here, okay? This, and also here, I took a summation, and then I just divide d squared uh, times r times d squared times this summation here, and then multiply it by mt over d on that basis, I get these values here, okay? And then I just add df and tf, I get the total distribution factor for each frame. Again, this first 7 is for the transverse, and the, the last 3 is for the longitudinal frame. So not take note that since the the uh, frame, the plan is symmetrical. The, you can see the symmetry, no? 0 0.175 at the ends, 0.164 somewhere at the middle, and a constant of 0 0.143 at exactly in the middle. And so it's true here, symmetrical. At the ends, they are the same. At the middle, of course, it's different. And you will notice that at the ends. At the end, the distribution factor total is greater than at the middle. So there might there will be a conclusion that the torsional effect is actually more uh, uh, what more uh, emphasized at the at the farthest columns. Yung pinaka malayo sa center of rigidity, yun na nakaka experience ng malaking torsional effect. Kaya yung nagsasabi na yung gitna daw na column ang mass critical, they are wrong, no? Not all the times. Maybe in vertical loads, yes, but not in the earthquake loads. Okay? Okay. So that's it for the computation of the torsional, uh, uh, sorry, the, the total factor uh, considering the direct and the torsional effect. I, I will show you how uh, this was used. Uh, this will be used uh, on the next video, okay? But before uh, going to that, uh, I will be discussing to you some, some considerations on the code regarding storage drift limitations. Uh, on the on the next video. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you have uh, learned something from this uh, lecture.